We've had Zambia's uh, Copper Belt Energy Corporation making headlines. The company is set to invest $164 million for a 60% stake in Nigeria's Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, a move aimed at reforming the power sector and addressing the need for increased investment. Joining us for more is Michael Tani, Managing Director of Corporate Development at Copper Belt Energy Corporation. Thanks so much, Michael, for joining us this afternoon. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. So as I highlighted there, uh, we've had the company making headlines on the back of this acquisition, acquiring a Buja Electricity Distribution Company. Take us through the rationale right at the top. Okay, well the Nigerian government uh, is privatizing um, all of its power sector apart from uh, transmission uh, and even that's being operated independently and I think the reason they're doing it is to bring new investment into the sector. It's underperformed its consumers for many, many years. Uh, most consumers don't have power for more than a few hours a day and I think everyone's had enough so the current government, the president in particular, has uh, promoted uh, privatization as a means of addressing that uh, problem. So being a distribution company in Africa ourselves, in Zambia, uh, we took an interest in it and uh, put in a, a bid along with many others um, and we were lucky enough to be preferred bidder for Abuja. How rigorous a bidding process were we looking at uh, so we get a sense of the kind of investment yeah. appeal that was actually put on the table because you highlight that the government is looking to attract more investment as well. Sure. Well, it was very tough, I have to say. Uh, I think at the beginning there were about 900 bidders, not just for this asset, but for the other companies on, for sale. But eventually it, w it was whittled down to a handful after a couple of stages. Uh, and in the end it came down to the quality of your business plan presented to the government. And I think what's impressed us uh, is the seriousness with which the government is taking it. And by that, that I mean they're supporting the process with uh, their own people, with advisors, they're putting in the relevant laws and they're giving it due attention to make sure it's a success. Mm -hmm. And also the Nigerians themselves, uh, particularly the investors, they are the, at the forefront of investing in the sector. So there's many investors there um, who, in fact, all of the winning bidders have been led by Nigerian consortia. So they have confidence in the sector, so that actually gives us confidence as well. Where everyone has confidence in the sector, it uh, ramps mm. up the competitiveness uh, within that landscape Sh quite a bit. Sure. So what's your assessment of that competitive landscape? Well, luckily for the distribution sector, we weren't competing just on price. We were competing on quality of our business plan. So we're quite confident that we can manage the business plan in terms of reducing losses and efficiency because that's our core business. Uh, so the system didn't force you to overbid and take too many risks. It was really focused towards the quality of what you were doing in the distribution side. So really you bid on based on your loss reduction profile, not, not on price. Mm -hmm. When it comes to price, you've settled on a price tag of $164 million uh, here. Take us through when you're expecting return on investment to be reaped at. You know, what kind of targets mm -hmm. have been set moving forward? Well, the targets they set were the targets that we ourselves set in our business plan, really. Uh, the price was fixed based on the asset value. Uh, but re really, we see about three years of stabilization where we have to invest a lot in the network. Uh, we have an investment plan of about half a billion dollars in uh, various types of equipment, particularly metering and improved management processes. And we see most investment returns coming in the three to seven year timescales. Uh, the government is also encouraging companies to list as soon as they possibly can. Y you normally need uh, three years worth of uh, positive results to list. Mm -hmm. um, we've already had discussions with the SEC there about that and the stock exchange. So um, it's going to be tough for the first couple of years. Uh, everyone's trying to make it work. But after that, I think it'll be very lucrative. You've got earnings growth from um, increased customer numbers, more generation and higher tariffs coming through in future years. How much tougher a feat is this where you're looking at the area you've invested in being a relatively lightly populated, uh, you know, it's uh, dominated by the federal capital, it has around 600,000 customers and an average electrification rate of 27%. So certainly the scope to grow is there, but you've got to put the question, who you'll be catering to moving forward right. with the area being lightly populated? Well, uh, I think first of all, Abuja itself is growing very quickly uh, and there is some industrial development in the other states as well, particularly Kogi state. And um, I think with the power sector improving, we're going to see more industrialization. Um, so we can certainly see more large credit worthy customers coming through. Also in the more r rural areas, yes, there's a need to increase electrification. But the way the tariff model works, in any case, it does incentivize you to get a return on your investment wherever your investment is. So um, they've looked at the regulatory system in line with international models mm -hmm. and uh, from what we can see it should work quite well. 
and uh, it should cater for both the residential sector, the remote sector and also the industrial sector. For, for the average Nigerian, what does this mean in terms of the price at which they'll be getting electricity? Okay, well the tariffs are, are going up. They're not going up uh, to, to, to such a great degree, but they're going up a little more than inflation for the first few years, and that's been pre-programmed into the whole system so that tariffs become cost-reflective, and that's a trend that we're seeing in other countries, including South Africa. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Nigeria, you have to remember that most people have generators at their house, and, and they use them for most of the time. So if the grid starts to work properly, even if uh, the tariffs are a little bit higher than they used to be from the grid, they're still saving money because the grid is going to be working more efficiently they won't need the generators as much, hopefully eventually, not at all, mm -hmm. and they will save money in the end. So we don't see anybody in the country trying to oppose that now. They all understand how much money they spend and probably waste on generators. From your perspective, I mean, you're, you're seeming to be pretty optimistic and positive about the road ahead uh, with this investment having been made. Do you foresee any major challenges or hurdles moving forward? Well, there's always challenges and hurdles. Uh, we, we have to react very quickly. We have to retrain a lot of people, put in a lot of technology very quickly and bring in the best uh, people we possibly can to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, so we're not pretending it's going to be easy, but at the end of the day it's our core business and, and what's good about it is that uh, Nigeria I think is the first in the continent, maybe after Uganda or one or two North African countries to, to do this kind of thing and we're hopeful that other countries will follow suit and eventually it's in everyone's interest to see this happen.